In this video, we're going to be talking about the cruise control circuit in your CAT diesel engines. So in this video, we're going to be talking about cruise control. Sorry, Ted, election's over. Tom, not about Scientology. So cruise control, very simple system on your CAT engines. Basically, you got an on-off switch, a set, and resume switch. But there can be a lot of problems with this system. And this video won't be very long because the system's strictly electronic. But the problem is finding out the wiring diagrams from CAT for your specific engine. So I'm going to be kind of going over how the wiring works in your cruise switch circuit. And hopefully from there you'll be able to figure it out yourself or at least have a better understanding of it, okay? Now most of this video is going to be going over the wiring diagrams to show you how the circuit works for your cruise control. I would like to start off to say though that without CAT ET, this is going to be very difficult because you're not going to be able to tell if the ECM is seeing the signal or not because the signal is not a voltage signal, it is a signal ground that the ECM sends out. So looking at your cruise control switch and your retarder switch here, you see how the retarder switch is an on off and then it sends the signal to the low high medium? Well, the cruise control is different. The cruise control has its own signal that it picks up on circuit H795 and then it sends it to the ECM for on off and then it has its, a different circuit for the accelerate set resume switch which you can see at the top so these are on different circuits so the cruise control on off does not supply the signal to the set and resume so you might be thinking okay well i see all of them are getting this pickup from h795 is that a battery ground is that a positive battery positive you see the h795 there well no Pretty much all the signals, including your retarder, your clutch position switch, everything comes off of pin number five on the ECM. And that is your accelerator pedal sensor switch return. And that is the circuit H795. The ECM uses that circuit to supply as a sensing signal circuit for all your switches, basically. Now, looking at an ECM here, on the right side, connector that's your p1 that's where all these inputs are taking place so they're pretty much all 70 pin all universal depending on whatever engine you have unless you have a real old one which is a 40 pin and you can see the little numbers there that'll tell you which pins are going into the ecm so getting back to this here you get the ecm sending out that that uh, h795 signal um, circuit that then runs through your switches whatever switch it may be and then it's if the switch is closed or open that sends the signal back to the ECM to a different pin location so there's a pin for your set speed at 35 there's a pin at 44 for your resume and there's a pin at 59 for your on off and if you're unsure as to where these pins are, you can't get a wiring diagram. If you have a download, an, an ECM download for your engine, these pins will be displayed in the configuration section. So you can see on this engine, this is a 2WS engine. That pin 59 is on off, and then you have 35 and 44 set resume. Now on some of the newer engines that have cap control modules, um, you know, such as a lot of the regen engines, you might have a cap controller, which you'll notice it doesn't have pin locations. It had it just says J1939 cap controller. That means that the ECM is not seeing the signal on these pins. It's actually communicating with another module. So that would be even harder to troubleshoot because there's nothing really to test. You can't ohm out the module. You'd have to rely on CAT ET to tell you whether the module is communicating or not. So that's kind of going over the basics of this system. Now, if you look at the layout here, 
you'll notice that there's also a clutch position um, switch and a brake position switch. And, and then it says NC next to them. You probably can't read the NC part. But that's normally closed. So the ECM is also picking up the brake pedal position switch and your clutch pedal position switch. And if these switches, which are normally closed, meaning if your foot's off the brake and off the clutch, those switches are closed, meaning they're sending the signal back to the ECM. If it does not see those, meaning that switch is open all the time, which doesn't necessarily mean your brake light would be on, but the ECM thinks you're hitting the brake. So a lot of the times when a cruise control complaint comes in, it's one of the either the clutch position switch or your um, brake pedal position switch is telling the ECM that either one of those pedals is being depressed, even though they're not. And your ECM thinks that, hey, they're hitting the brakes, so don't turn the cruise control on. That's probably one of the bigger complaints for cruise control. Um, now, the problem is that'd be hard to troubleshoot. You can try finding these switches. They're usually in the dash somewhere, the clutch position, pedal position ones, usually by the pedal or on the linkage somewhere. And you can try ohming them out to see if the switches work or not. But the best way is with CAD ET. You can actually hook up to the ECM and you can see what the ECM's seeing. Um, but without it, CAD ET, um, it'll be a little harder. But at least you know the basics of how the cruise control circuit works. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video.